Okay, so let's see this project. So first we have to create a new Razor template project. So dot net new Razor dash O for the O for output for the output directory. So this is going to be the uh, output directory of this project and also the name of the project. So let's call it my time. Okay, so let's change uh, directory and let's open it in VS Code. It, yes. Okay, so we should open the index.cs uh, HTML. So, and we should uh, display the current date and time uh, on our home page, which is the index page. Uh, so, and uh, we should write the code both in C sharp, which is uh, server side, you know, and uh, in JavaScript, which is uh, <coughs> client side. So, if you upload the project uh, to your web host. You, you can see the time difference between the remote machine and, and your local machine. So uh, first let's see how to do this in C Sharp. It is very simple. So let's create a variable, let's call it time. And there is a structure in C Sharp called date time which may have a property called now and then all you have to do is change welcome to at and the variable time that's all so let's run the project just have to wait for a couple of seconds let me pause the video well I don't have to okay advanced because we trust the local host so as you can see we have the current date and time okay let's stop the local host let me clear the terminal. Okay, so how you can do this in JavaScript? You know, uh, to make an analogy, if you wanted to compare uh, making a website to making a film, uh, HTML would be the script. Uh, CSS uh, would be the costume designer, for example, and uh, JavaScript is uh, JavaScript would be the special effects, and DOM, which stands for Document Object Model, DOM would be the producer of the film. So, uh, so let's use. Uh, uh, let's have another heading h1 
you know in HTML we we use these tags uh, each tag has a name uh, between you know these uh, angle braces and uh, most tags has an opening tag and a closing tag like this one you know the the this uh, h1 which is the one of the heading tags okay so and and uh, you know each tag may have uh, attributes in HTML so I'm going to use the class attribute and uh, refer to a specific uh, style sheet okay which is going to be the same okay so I'm now going to uh, use the script tags because I'm going to write some JavaScript now Okay, so script. So first, uh, we should declare our variables. You know, JavaScript and, and C Sharp has some similarities. Uh, the most important similarity is that JavaScript has the same C-like syntax. But of course, uh, both languages have some major differences. For example, uh, while uh, C Sharp is compiled, JavaScript is interpreted. Or, uh, you know, C Sharp is object oriented, uh, whereas JavaScript is, is, is a so called prototype based language because there is no such thing. In, in JavaScript as as a class and one there is one uh, more uh, major difference I'd like to call your attention to and uh, you know in JavaScript uh, declaration is always implicit which means that uh, the data type of the variable you declare is determined when you assigning a value to it. So if the value is a string, the data type is a string. If the value is a number, for example, some kind of integer, the data type is a number. So let's call, uh, let's uh, declare our variables. We need a variable for the time string because we have to display the current date and time. Uh, so let's call it time string. I'm going to abbreviate it like that. Okay, we need a separator. You know, because, you know, we, we use these colons uh, between hour and minute and also between minute and second okay uh, yeah yeah and and also we need uh, we need the date so we are going to create the date as well okay but Okay, so now let first let's uh, do do the time. Okay, so so we also need uh, another variable. Let's call it uh, zero. Okay, and then we need a function. Uh, I'm going to call it tic tac. not going to have any parameters and we need some other variables like in uh, C sharp we need a variable uh, for holding the current date and time so let's call it time
okay in JavaScript you can use this new keyword to create a new object so now uh, our variable called time is going to hold uh, you know the current date and time okay so now, now we need a variable for the hour now that we have this time variable and we uh, it, if you use the dot notation you can see all the methods it may have and uh, obviously you have a method called uh, get hours okay so we need another one for the minute and one for second okay now let's say if hour is less than 10 time string we have this variable called time string uh, is going to be equal to uh, zero plus hour plus this uh, the separator you know in in JavaScript script just like in C sharp the the addition operator can be used both for for can be used both as an arithmetic operator and and uh, as and for concatenating okay so you can you can you can use it for concatenating a string to any variable okay okay so else else uh, else time string equals uh, hour plus the separator okay then comes uh, the minute so it's the same thing if uh, minute is less than 10 time string I'm going to use the add and assign operator you can use this abbreviation in JavaScript too because now I'd like to concatenate the minute to the hour so that is why I'm, I'm using this add and assign operator and zero plus minute plus uh, separator you know the colon okay uh, else uh, time string add and assign minute plus separator okay and last but not least the same goes for second so if uh, second is less than 10 Time string add and assign zero plus second and now we don't need the separator because we we don't put a colon after the seconds you know so else time string 
add in the sign second and uh, we should uh, okay so let's have a um, I think I'm going to use uh, another another attribute here. I'm going to Okay, so let's use a uh, span, the span tag, ID, our, class, yes, yeah, so I'm going to use another span tag here and uh, it has this ID uh, called time uh, now I'm going to use the document variable and uh, there is a method called get element by ID so I've got we've got this HTML element which has this unique identifier so this is how you can get the element by its ID and let's say it has a field called inner HTML which is going to be equal the time string and also we have to use a another method called set timeout Tic tac. We are going to call here our function called tic tac. You see, one thousand refers to one second because one refers to one millisecond. And last but not least, we should. Uh, we should also have a so-called event handler uh, so we are going to use the window yes the window variable the on load field which is going to be equal So we are going to actually we are going to call uh, our function called tic tac okay let's let's debug let's run run this We have to wait for the project to be rebuilt actually. That that's why it takes you a couple of minutes. You see? We have a digital clock written in JavaScript. Okay, so now we have the time but we don't have the current date so you know so this is server side here and this is this is the client side okay so let's uh, stop this
so we need another another script here okay so we need a variable let's call it now again we are going to create a new object called now which is going to hold the current date and time and we also need an array uh, a one-dimensional array uh, called month in JavaScript declaring an, an array is that simple all you have to you all, all you have to do is use these uh, square brackets this is this is going to tell the the interpreter that uh, you know that this variable is is an array it's not a simple variable but it's an array you know an array is is a group of variables actually which has the same name and data type so let's say one two three because we have 12 month okay so I'm going to pause the video now. We have this one dimensional array containing 12 elements, one from one to 12, symbolizing, you know, uh, the months, because there are 12 months in a year. Okay, so now we have another, we need another var variable, let's call it, uh, today you know what's the date today that's the question so uh, so uh, now that we have this variable uh, which is used for holding the current date and time called now you know we have and and of course it may have different methods and you will find a method called get full year okay and I'm going to concatenate a dot because I'm going to use the Hungarian regional format so I'm going to concatenate a dot and a space to the year to the full year okay then we need the array called month and of course now get month we need this because uh, you know if you don't use the array you you would get three instead of four you need this because otherwise you would get three instead of four which is not true because uh, it's April you know it's April the 19th because it's zero based so you know zero refers to January and 11 to December so actually the index of April is is truly three so uh, I'm going to concatenate a dot and and a space and last but not least we need uh, the date okay and we also need a dot after that in accordance with the Hungarian regional format as you can see in the lower right corner of my uh, PC okay and I'm going to use the right uh, method just like in C sharp we have this right method in JavaScript and the parameter is going to be our our today uh, variable our variable called today I had better say so dot net run let's wait for the project to rebuild itself 
Now let's refresh this. So you see, so this is server side and this is current side. Now let's see, uh, now I'm going to call this, uh, you know, on the uh, remote machine. You see, the time difference is nine hours, uh, which means that uh, the server uh, to which I have uploaded this project is located somewhere on the west coast of the US. Okay, so thank you for watching.